It's near and dear to me being, a, you know, have been, had been, ironically, I'm wearing this shirt, you know, having been a track and field athlete for most of my life. And that was a big part of my life up until I was 23 years old and uh, 23, 24. And seeing some stuff like this happen, it really upsets me. But it's what happened and it needs to be discussed. But there was a Swiss sprinter by the name of Sarah Acho. Now it has fucking pericarditis. And of course, this is after getting a booster. This is an Olympic sprinter, by the way. You want to talk about someone that's literally in peak physical condition. Had absolutely no reason to be being pushed to get this shit. Got it. And now she has a heart issue that is not, we talking about myocarditis and pericarditis. This shit is real, man. Olympic sprinter. Um, you know, Sarah Acho. She's saying she's upset because she's been diagnosed with the condition. In the Instagram post to her followers, she's uh, said that she had been diagnosed with this. Uh, she ran 100, which was the event that I did. Uh, and the 2016 Brazilian, uh, uh, was that real? The uh, was 2016 real? Um, says um, pericarditis is more, ser- it, it more serious than myocarditis. Inflammation around the heart muscle are known, but rare side effects. It's a side effect nonetheless. She's 26 and says she got her booster uh, because she didn't want to struggle with this when the season started. That was, again, that was a bad that was a bad move, okay? That was a terrible move, and I'm not saying this to throw dirt on her shitty situation. I'm just being honest. If anybody that's had been paying attention to this knows that as a healthy 26-year-old, that was the dumbest fucking move you could have fucking made. Not only getting this shit, but you're getting boosters. So here was the post. You can see Sarah here. Here was the post right here. Obviously, as you know, I'm trying to be as transparent as I can find now uh, is more important than ever. On December 22nd, I got my booster vaccination because I didn't want to struggle with this when the season started. I was told that it was safer to get Pfizer to avoid the cardiac side effects. On December 27th, I felt tightness in my chest and started feeling dizzy while walking up the stairs. This happened a few more times until I decided to check with a cardiologist and was diagnosed uh, me with pericarditis, inflammation of the thin membrane surrounding the heart. Um, and to get that shit checked out when you have like some heart issues, by the way, um, I thought I had a uh, like issue. I remember people know about this. This is actually one of the big reasons why I'm not taking this shit. Um, I got diagnosed with having uh, PACs and uh, basically it just means that my heart um, every now and then beats irregularly, if you will. It's not anything like insane. Uh, that's 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 going to be a problem. It's non-lethal. Uh, but. Yeah, if my heart's infl- uh, you know, inflamed, that ends up becoming an issue more than anything. So I, I of course, ain't taking that shit. And uh, me and my cardiologist talked about that. I am now uh, not allowed to get my heart rate up for a few weeks to allow my heart to get some rest and heal from the inflammation. I'm still doing great, and I can, uh, with my coach, uh, I'm still doing everything I can with my coach to keep my muscles moving. And he's doing a great job. I have to admit that I'm upset at the situation because we don't talk enough about the side effects. I feel helpless since this is completely out of my control. I am glad the vaccine helped avoid many deaths and reduce the pressure on hospital and hospital staff. However, I'm frustrated that myself, as well as other young, healthy people are suffering from these side effects. I hope you understand why it's important for me to share. And I'll keep you guys updated on the process. Let me know if you're experiencing the same. Let's help each other. Well, a lot of that is what happened anyway. You know, it's 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 a combination of folks acting like that wasn't a thing and not really assessing risk. Particularly, it was worse with young men. 
It's myocarditis and pericarditis. And and the, this is why I was so, I would argue evil. That people rush so much to get like young people jabbed. You're trying to get youngsters jabbed, five, ages five and up, and even younger in that cases. Like, that's fucking insane. Because these are people that are almost at virtually no risk. Near statistical insignificant. Actually, it probably is statistically insignificant in terms of the deaths. If you actually look at the numbers and hospitalization numbers, why are you so itching to get these people jabbed? Why? Why? And now you have people because they thought, well, this is something that I need to do. Uh, This has been sold as something that's going to help me. Um, Nobody. And because you unfortunately didn't want to. This is my criticism of her. I'm not saying this as a knock. Because I get it that if you have everybody from your government on down telling you that you need to do this, this is better. You think that this is best for you. But anybody that even mildly looked at these fucking numbers knew that as a healthy 26 year old, as a healthy 26 year old, you had no business going to get that shit. None. Because there were more than likely because of your health and age demographic, you are going to see an increase for something else like myocarditis and pericarditis. Then, and you are more like, I won't say more likely, but you're, is it worth for the sake of being, you know, you, you got a 99.9 like 99.99 percent chance of surviving and not going to the hospital probably as well. Is it worth, Doing that and getting an increase, not to say that it means that just because you got jabbed, you're going to get myocarditis or pericarditis. That's not that's not what it's saying. It's saying that for some demographics, that is not a risk worth taking. Because you're increasing a risk somewhere else for something that is disastrous, something that this person is going to have to live with for the rest of their fucking life. It's not. And because we could not we we talked about this on a channel for two years, but so many other people were too chicken shit to even have a conversation. It's just get the jab, 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 jab. That's the only thing, only way going to get us on the other side. So everybody went and got this shit. And you had people, able bodied, young people that are in the prime peak of their fucking life uh, in the best shape that they'll ever be in who went there and lined up to get that motherfucking jab. For what? Because they were told. And uh, like she, she she explicitly stated, she literally says, I was told it was safer to get Pfizer to avoid cardiac cardiac side effects. And she's what she's referring to is like the Moderna, a lot of Moderna situation. Some of them had admit already that Moderna had that in, had that issue and some of those shots had those issues. But the Pfizer one was the better one. But the Pfizer one still could give you this shit. I hate to hear stuff like this, man, from young people. And this is why shutting down conversations and people that advocated for that in the name of what they deemed as medical and for misinformation in the event that you even mildly question it. And this comes from people that are even experienced in the fields of virology or, or, you know, health and all of that shit, scientists. And they were shut down and they would ring the alarm on some of this stuff social media websites in the event you talk about it they got to put some little disclaimer there oh this is misleading or the context is missing no the context isn't missing as rare as it might be it happens and you are having people that are going to see almost no consequence dude i'm what i am five years yeah five years four five years older than than her me and Lady River just got over this shit. And she is actually, I mean, I, yeah, I work out every day, but track is a whole nother fucking animal. And I say this as a guy that did it for so long. If you actually are training to be a, uh, a, 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 like a, this track and field is your like basically job. Ain't no, ain't a whole lot of people in this world in better shape than you. It's the one, it's the one thing you got to train your body to fail at. So you are going to be in peak fucking condition. Um, 
in comparison to the rest of the world, if you are a track and field athlete, this was the last person that had any business getting this shit. And the people that I believe are complicit in all of this are those who who refuse to not only talk about this, act like there was a crime when you acknowledge this. These are the these are the criminals. It's them. I hate to hear shit like this. man. You just listened to a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash Young Ripper 59 and Odyssey.com slash at Young Ripper 59. Be sure to check out my website, EricDJuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.